go to the States. You know, when he went, he came here, and he got, I don't know if you guys know the story, he came here, and he was constantly seeking God, constantly wrestling with God, because he knew that if he messed up and heard God's voice wrong, it, it wasn't just about him. He had his entire family here, right? So if he heard God's voice in the wrong way as a father, it's not just his life at stake, it's his entire family. All right? So fathers can relate to Jacob at this point. When you're making a decision that doesn't just involve you, it involves your wife, it involves your children, your future grandchildren. It involves them too. So this is what Jacob was going through. And that's why he was so desperate, you see. That's why he was clinging on to God. And he said to God, I will not leave here until you bless me. Bless me, please. I will not leave here until you bless me. And something in that dialogue pleased God. Because they were wrestling all night. Jacob could have tapped out. He even, he even injured him. You know, his hip got dislocated. Yet Jacob didn't tap out. He could have. Sometimes when you wrestle with God, we get hurt in the process, but keep on, keep holding on to him. Keep holding on to him. He got hurt. He's been wrestling all night. He's about to face Esau. The least of his worries is wrestling some random guy. <laughs> but he did it. Because something within Jacob knew, I'm in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. So he wrestled with God. He said, I will not leave you. I will not let go of you until you bless me. Because I know that my entire family is at stake. My entire lineage is at stake. My entire household is at stake. Everyone that will be blessed through me and through my family is at stake. God, do not, come on, I will not let go of you, God. Bless me. And something about that desperation changed him. Not change. I'm sure God already knew it, but he was waiting for it. Something about that desperation enabled a response from God. And he said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And then God told him. Because remember, back then, it's your Jacob, your name is your identity. So God gave him a new identity. And he said, you will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Amen. You will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. You will no longer be called a cheat. You will no longer be called a liar. You will no longer be called weak. You will no longer be last. You will be first. You will no longer be called a loser. And he gave him the name Israel because he has struggled with men and with God and have won. And from that for forward on, Jacob was limping as a constant reminder that he needs God. As a constant reminder that if he wants to keep going, he has to have God as a clutch. If he wants to keep working, he has to have God as a clutch. We're talking about lineage now. He was set free from that name. Remember, Jacob means you're a deceiver, you're a cheater, you're a liar. He was set free from being Jacob and he became Israel. Israel had 12 sons. The 12 sons, among those 12 sons, is Judah. From Judah, if you go all the way down, through Jacob, through Judah, all the way down, Jesus was born. Now, he became from a cheat and a liar to the father of many nations. And through Jesus Christ, we are all here today. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you guys, church, I don't when we're serving God and wrestling with him, there is more at stake than just us. There's lineage. Right. There's more at stake than just you yeah. and your personal struggle. Why are you here today? At the end, how did you get, how did you know Hope for the World? You can say it. 
she chose to stay here Amen. she chose to stay here and dwell in God's presence Amen. so many times you know in the privacy of our home in the civilian home she's cried to my parents she's cried to me she's cried like really cried cried to my mom my dad and she's asking why why but even through that pain and sorrow she chose to serve God. She chose to dwell in God's presence. She chose to stand here and worship Him. She chose it. And you know, through her life, people will know her story and find out that they're not alone. You all have your own story to tell. God has instilled in you a story to tell. The enemy has come to destroy lineage. But in Jesus' name, we take it back. Yes. In Jesus' name, we take it back. There is a generation attached to you that will know the name of God because you have a name. There is a generation attached to Jacob. Do you see that? He was wrestling with God, and because he didn't, he chose to stay. Because he chose to fight, God hurt him. Hey, God hurt him really bad. His, his, his hip was dislocated, but he didn't care. He said, God, I will go through this pain with yeah. you because I know you will hear yeah. me. God, I will go through it all with you because I know you're the source of all my blessings. You're the source of my life, God. I am not without because I have you. Yeah. Now, everyone, can we just take like 10 seconds to just proclaim the name of God? Yeah. And just
to have a personal encounter with God. Give yourselves a few moments to really talk to Him and seek Him right now. Right now, right now. Generational curses are broken because you are standing in this place. Generational curse, curses are broken. You will be set free and I will give you a new name. You are free, church. You are free. Fill me with your spirit to walk. 
sermon any better than that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is the first time that I have sat in a worship service and not stopped crying. I don't know whether it's because my daughter is preaching or something, but everything that was said this morning really struck my heart. Really struck my heart. Praise God. And uh, I want to check whether it's maybe, maybe it's because it comes from from my daughter. And I was joking with uh, Mian. I think she's getting to be like a typical preacher that says I have four points and end up in three points. <laughs> I remember when I was starting as a preacher, I said, I have five points and end up at three. Didn't she say she has four points? Yeah. 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 Next, next week is the fourth. <laughs> so that's very, very heartfelt. Amen. Praise Amen. God. And I know everyone felt it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Let's uh, call on who's ever praying for our, our offering. We lost track. And you need to overshot. You're crying too. Who's praying for our offering? Who is assigned today? Huh? Who? Pastor Noli. Pastor Noli? Supposedly Marisa. Oh, Marisa left for the Philippines tomorrow and yesterday. Ronnie Libramonte is in the Philippines too, you know, and, and, and praise God, let's, let's just commit them to God. Okay, any volunteer? <laughs> Anyone who wants to pray for the offering? You want me to volunteer? Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for always blessing us, for always showing us your presence, Lord. You're truly amazing, God, with everything that you do, little and big, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that um, we just make ourselves available and you do it through us. We thank you, Lord, always for blessing us with your words, Lord, your words that impact our lives, truly heartfelt, Lord God. You are the one speaking today, Lord God, and I know, Lord God, if you don't let go, if you continue on, you will continue to bless this church. And right now, Lord God, I know as I pray for an offering, Lord, you will continue to flourish this. Lord, everybody, um, the recipients of this, Lord, and our missions, Lord God, I know your name will be out there, Lord. And that is all what we want to do through your missions, for your name to be glorified, for your name to be spread all throughout the earth, Lord. Because you love us, because you are for us. And right now, God, I know, bless this offering right now. Uh, to fulfill your mission, to fulfill your will in our lives. 
Cassandra Knights and Mission Offerings through Zell at hfwla at gmail.com or 323 You may also use your boxpark.com. Our account number is 201-204-2347. And uh, I think this cell is working. Someone uh, told me that uh, she sold. She sold. <laughs> she sold. She sent through Zell. Yung tips niya kagabi for the fish bowl and then. So you guys could still uh, donate. <laughs> Alright. So as mentioned by Pastor Nolly, we will have a Thanksgiving service this Sunday. Yeah. Next Sunday. Yeah. Later. And then our cleaners for what is that to say? It's redeem and no, it's not sad. We're we're happy <laughs> to serve, amen. amen. And redeem and R O D. We are Ryan. We are Ryan. Are you supposed to sing prayer? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Singapore? Yeah, he is. Tatay Larry? Si Jesus, by the help of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and by your grace. Thank you for your word of wisdom in our Sunday service, for it is a lamb unto our feet and a life unto our heart. Grant that we may love it, understand it, believe it, and live according to it. Yes. Hear us for the sake of our our uh, Oh, hallelujah, Lord, of our God and our uh, Jesus Christ. Thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We worship you in the spirit and truth. You are the greatest, the sovereign one. Amen. The God of all creation. And without you, nothing made us possible. Again today, you have blessed us, dear Lord, above all that we could ask or Yes. We praise you, Lord Jesus, with our grateful heart for the protection and guidance that we have enjoyed to your goodness and love. Your continuous presence has made that day brighter, even though we have failed them. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. May the peace and hope for the world make us all better Christian, stronger in faith, nobler in character, more concentrated in service and faithful disciples. Thank you for your loving care, and we know that all things work together for good to those who will love God, to those who are the poor according to your love. To God be all the glory for the things you have done. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, this is our prayer. Amen.